All right, let's get into this. Before you come over here, I'm going to get the um, craft white paint and some retarder there. And I do want to grab, I put her on a brush, get my glasses up there, and get you over here. So down on the palette, I've got me craft white and me put her on a brush. Why would I? Are you a techno guru now? Are you talking to me, Jeff, or? Oh no, that's not Jeff, it's someone else. Now I might not be able to comment on everyone. All right, let's change this up and make something out of it. Eh? So I'm just gonna get my sky in there with some craft paint and retarder. Now, just before I, I did draw the um, line on there. I want to just tape it off because I do not want um, retarder in me mountains and that. It just makes it harder for them to be painted. Okay. So I'll just roughly line that up there like that, mask that off, just so it won't get, be hard to paint later on. So this is all aimed at beginners, what I do on this channel here. And some, some beginners do look at subjects and think they can't do it. Any, with any amount of practice, you can do it okay. Everything is achievable, and it's just a matter of practicing. So I'm just rubbing that in beautiful onto that toothed canvas, and we're gonna get that sky going. And I want to pick up some of this and I want to paint kind of loose and just add at it, you know, I want to get add at it. Add at it means, you know, when you're getting back and getting right into your paint in there, it's achievable. We've got our mountains there, it's going to have white. So I'm going to just crisscross this Indian yellow. My goodness, look at that stuff, hey? isn't that wonderful? I love it. Probably all over this corner here and I'm scooting it. Now having that white underneath helps undercoat this yellow because if you don't, it could be very see-through-y. I'm going to get deliberate brighter bits in there as well. There we go. Now I'll just lightly scoop that into the white there like so. There we go. That's the way it's coming out pretty easy all right all right now the next color I'm looking there I want to get some of that violet come down here there is a little bit of blue as well, but if I put some blue next to that yellow, I've gonna to put too much yellow. I'll end up getting green in the sky. I don't want green happening. So I'm gonna get this quinacridone violet up the top there, okay? I've just wiped the brush. I haven't washed it. And I wanna get this, so I'll start over here. Come along and scoot it into that yellow. Come along, see how it's picking up that white? That's great. A bit darker there. Come along. I'm going to change this up quite a bit. Come along. I'm kind of making it a moody sky over here. Come along about there and get some of it scooting in there like that. Okay. And then the, the white clouds that I put on there will do some wonderful things as well. What a delay. Different colours, you can get these colours if you don't have them. Let me just see if I can scoot that into there just lightly on the same. Yeah, that'll do. I don't want to see what's happened there. I don't want that to happen too much. So I'll Stop that and stop. 
Okay, now where is my, um, there it is down there, look. Can you see over there? My hand's grabbing the red gold. The red gold. I want a bit of red gold. There's a tinny bit of something in there, but I'm going to put me red gold in that tinny winny bit that's there. So I want that brush again. Get some red gold. Red gold and Indian yellow together. They always look good. Okay, and I want to mainly up here now. Jingle jangle it up there. Come in here. And we could probably put a little bit there. I'll use this to soften some of that quinacrinone violet down because it's very strong. And I'll get that up there like that. Beautiful. And I'll just wipe the brush. And see here, I've got a little bit of there. I want to just blend that soft. Okay, all done. I can keep mucking with that till the cows come home. I've had enough. I've done enough. That's all it needs doing. I want to grab some just good titanium white out of the tube. I want to find a blending brush. But before I do, bear with me one moment. as I need to wash this brush and give it a severe flogging because I'm going to need it for, for the water down below. So we'll give it a flogging. Oh, there we go, look at that. We want some brush to blend, I'll get that out the way so it's not balking you, not to blend, to stamp on the clouds. Now I do this method in all my paintings regardless what the colour is, the principle is the same, but you get so many different sky effects, okay? So I'll start from the bottom and work my way up, all right? I've put the white craft paint on with retarder, that was the base. Then you get your sky colour on, neat. No retarder in those colours, just fresh out the tube. Put them on the way you want. Then this titanium white out of the tube, neat. You start putting this on the way you want. I'm going to have some clouds. So then stamp the body of your cloud on, okay? Stamp it on and you'll get one pass, I normally do. One pass. Okay, it's starting to get dirty. Look at all that on there. You don't want to keep putting that here and there. You'll get grievously disappointed and wonder why things are not working for you the way it did for the person on the, on the screen. Then you get your appropriate blending brush and a cloth, paper towel or something. Now we want to lightly dance, twist. Oh, see how that just puts some there? I like that, so I'm going to keep it. I'll take advantage of that. That's a freebie, all right? And we're going to twist, and turmoil is the key. Turmoil is the key. Look at this. These are going to be whispery clouds, similar to what's in the reference picture there. I'm going to take advantage of the, the cloud layout in the reference picture. And I want to see I've got an ugly bit there. Don't like it. So I'm going to manipulate that in this direction. Okay. Now I'm washing that brush, the fan brush into some water, rinsing it clean, and I always squeeze it in a towel. That way it's pretty dry again, and we're getting more titanium white, and we're pretty much going to, I'll get some more out here, start from the middle. Hang on, I better get more white. I just haven't got enough. I've run out so quickly. Ugh. How you going, Ange Young? All good there. You, you keep an eye on everybody for me, okay? Now this is going to jangle out, jangle out, and get some whispery bits like that. It's art. It's art. You make it artistic. You go loud to them. Everything's going to whoosh out from this spot. I'm going to get this white intense bit. Find the turmoil within it. I'm trying not to get my hand in the way. 
sometimes a brush might have already done some good bits. You don't have to blend. Leave them and get that turmoil. Don't just blend everything like a machine. Otherwise, you'll get a flat looking cloud on your painting. You want to try and have them look like they're coming at you and over your head and boom. Okay, and it's achievable. Um, hopefully this will work for me. I'm trying to get this all blended up there. Everything's wet and lovely. And this, these clouds that I'm putting on, they're pretty much going to hide all the joins within the different colours that I've put in the sky. So it works that way for you as well. So I'm just picking up some more now. I'll start from here again, get some more clouds scooting up into this orange. So it's picking up all the orange and the the yellow at the moment, that magenta or the quinacridone violet, sorry. Crazy colours, but we'll see how it turns out. It might turn out just, it might fail, but we won't know until we give it a go. Someone asked, do I practice my paintings before I go live or do a tutorial? No, as you see me here painting it, it's the first time I'm painting it as well. All right, I'll soften that down there a bit because that's going to have some kind of trees in I like the way that's looking. Sometimes I've done a painting and I've liked the way it's turned out and in the end I've done something totally wrong to it and I've just turned the whole thing into snot. I think we've all had those sort of issues. Now I'll put something just here. So I'm going to start on here. I'll give it a bum because it's high up and this will create that illusion that it's over our head. And I'm getting all that white paint there. It's going to come across there. See, I'm still blending that brush. Now I'll give that a bit of a bum. I don't need any greys or nothing because it's picking up all those colours in the sky. And turmoil it. If it needs yumminess, we can add some more vibrant white to it later. Let's just put that in front kind of, so to speak, okay? And it's constantly washing the brush every time you're picking up the white. I need more white. I'm going through some white in this sky. I don't think I um, want to use that much, but I am. All right, now we'll get some here. Uh, Where's that? There we go. Get some here. All the way there. I'm going to keep them going in this fashion because I like it. Oh, we've got some, that colour there. See how that, I brought that darker colour back in there. You don't want to do that. Barbara Prather, get out how you going? And one more section to go and that's the sky done. What have we been going for? 20 minutes. Okay, I'm getting some more titanium white. And we'll just... Get some more up here. That'll do it. This is pretty much going to be me sky, okay? It's a crazy sky, but something different. Something different always can be beautiful or a challenge. Uh, I'll take this tape off. I'll get rid of that ridge that's within that paint there. And I'll give this just a bit of a dry now so I can do the rest. I've still got my craft white. I'll add a little bit more tight retarder. What am I saying titanium white for? <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking now. Um, boom, boom, boom. I will, where I'm going to put the water now, I'm going to put the water in. There's not much reflection in this water, so that's good. And we'll pretty much tape that, because that area there that's all been masked off now is um, water. 
This is sort of coming down here, which is fine. It'll come that way. That's going to be landmass there. And to get that the colour I want, down here I'm mixing up that retarder and the craft paint again, just so as I can base in the, um, put a base coat down for the water. Oh yeah, got just enough out of that. I want to grab some, uh, where are we? I'm just behind here, so bear with me a minute. Just some turquoise. So I need to come down. Oh, we're on the palette. So we've got our blue there, and I'm going to grab some turquoise as well. Okay. I've had that for a long time, that turquoise. Quite a long time. Many years. And it was only a cheap brand too, but it's the same brand that is my craft paint. Okay, we got that done. Uh, we've got that. I do want a tiny bit of, um, while we're getting this going, let me look over here. Here it is. A tiny bit of um, dioxine purple. So I'll grab some of that for the palette as well. So this is going to be the water flavours, okay? We'll put some of that over there, let's say. Just need a bit of that, not too much. Um, I'm going to wipe this brush. And I'll start with the, the lighter colour. And because it's going on wet, retarded craft paint, it's going to lighten up a bit as well, because you don't want a big, solid, flat colour like that. Hello, Franca. All right, so this is going to come along here. It's, oh, it was a bit bluer in the picture, but mine's this colour, so so what, I've made it my own. There we go. It's pretty much over this side, this tone, or value. There we go. And I can add light or dark in it later. I'm criss See, I'm getting bands of light and dark. I'm crisscrossing that to sort of iron them out and then I'll come back left and right and you've got a nice even surface there. Wipe your brush. I haven't washed it and I want to get some of um, the, come down here, the cerulean blue and a little bit of dioxine purple. There we go, look at that. Not too much. It's going to lighten up when it hits that white, but that's the sting. That's the flavour I'm looking for right in this corner here. Oh, yes. So I'm going to get it on there and I'm going to bring it to that colour there. It's what I saw in the photo, so that's what I'm using. It could be something totally different, but to me it looks like this and it's now I've got to marry those two together right here. I want to marry those two together because this is going to be the illusion of it going underwater. And you'll see how to do it. And once you know how to do it, you can do it. Where if you just saw the painting, you'd think if you're a beginner, I cannot do that. You can do it. You can do it. And when you see how it's done, it's quite easy. So we've got a darker value there. Is that look? Yep, that's looking good. See how that worked? Now I'm just, I'll sort of come across the bottom here. Just like that, getting those flavours there. Beautiful, I'm massaging it in. I'm having a fun time doing this. Now, I just want to um, put some white here in the water as well, because it's got it in the painting, and I just think, It'll look great, or well, we all would agree once it's there. So the best way to do it, any reflection, whether it's the sun, the moon, in the water, you got your object, wherever your object is, put your reflection straight down. Don't come on an angle, okay? Never on an angle. So I'm picking this titanium wine up off the brush. And I want this white pretty much there, 
just some white glow in the water there. Boom, just like that, see? That's all it was. Now I'm going to waterlize it. What that means is get that big line of it out of the way and just waterlize it so it looks like it's it's in water. You know what I mean? It's in a straight line. There we go, I'll do a bit more waterlizing. There we go. I could have even put shimmer there with the toothbrush, you know, but that's it. Just a nice bright value out there in the middle of the water. Don't muck with it too much, you'll lose it. But see, it's subtle, but it's there and it looks great. Now we want to get a little round, where's my filberty one? Where's my little round filbert, my new one? I'm just looking for it here. Uh, is that it? No, that's, there it is, I found it. Because I want to do some stones under the water as well. So I want my yellow oxide. Come down here, we've got some yellow oxide. And we'll have some uh, maybe brown, some burn umber. Burn umber is always a good rock colour as well, okay? And we've got some more white. We need some more white up there as well. So I'll put some more white on the palette. I've got a big glass palette here because I get paint everywhere. And we want to just subtly but effectively, we'll get some of this and evaluate it down into some white over here. That way we're evaluating it with some white, all right? Just about that value. And then we can do that with some yellow ochre as well. Now I'm loading up both sides mixed on this brush. I don't want any nasty surprises. And we're going to slightly put, I better put the camera up so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to get some of these rocks under there, okay? So the further ones away, which is about here, are tiny. Just a little Look at that, I'll put a big blob there, but we'll mask that up somehow. Let me put my glasses on. And we're getting some rocks out here now, but you know what? See, it's, it's pushing the blue paint right down to the white there because everything is still wet. So dry that. Okay, that's dry. Because sometimes when it's not dry a beginner can get confused now we're going to do some there see how that's sitting on it now i'll come back up here now and do this now these are going to sort of splay out this way and come bigger as we come to the man that's painting the picture all right so these are you know you can detail these better but i'm just kind of doing what i'm doing some can come all the way out, out of it a bit, come a bit bigger now. Beautiful big rocks. Some bigger ones here now. And where are we? In the, I'll have a quick look in the picture there. We've got some beautiful big ones here. I'm just using this brush on its side there, see? On its edge. Use whatever you think will work for you. And we're going to have different colours within this as well but not too much, you don't want it going crazy. Have I got the here? I've got it up there. Now all my paintings are for sale and if they're ever gone and already been bought, you can always buy uh, prints of my paintings. Oh my goodness, what have you got there? That's coffee, is it? Balance it right in the middle of that paint, son. Put it next to the yellow there, cause um, that's it. You did well there, boy, look at that. I kicked a goal tonight, haven't I? Look at that. Bloody got a coffee. Too easy. Now look at these rocks. They're starting to take shape. I've got to rush this because I only get about an hour with my um, battery and my phone camera here, okay? There we go. There we go. And now we also, I'm going to just get some darker um, burn umber because the rocks that are coming out of the water, which is all the way around here, these bits will be out of the water. We need to get those kind of um, mergulating down within as well. But they're just a bit darker because they're not going to be underwater. Those rocks that I just put on, 
they are all going to be underwater. And you'll see how to do that yourself in a minute. So get some of this there. And if anything troubles you or you have difficulty doing it, it's just your inner self telling you, you need to practice that man and you'll conquer it. That's all it takes. All the greats and masters of whatever they were great and masters of, they did lots of practicing. See, that's a bit darker. Now, I've got to dry that. That'll do. Now we've got some, I've got to clean that brush, the same brush. I'm going to use the same brush because it's working for me. Is that the right one yet? So bear with me while I'm cleaning it. Now, we have the yellow oxide. And we'll pull that over into some of the, where did I put that white? Over here. We've got some white here, okay? So we've got some beautiful yellow oxide. Um, before I put the lighter yellow oxide in there, I'll come back, I'll just quickly rinse that white off there. I've got my yellow oxide and the tinted version of it. Get some of the yellow oxide, the darker value, put the darker in first and highlight it with some highlights. And we can tinker in amongst all this. Just easy does it now, easy does it. Don't get carried away. Just here and there, not all over. Don't put a full pattern of this in it now. Just here and there somewhere. See what I'm doing? Where's the bottom there? Because there's just different sort of stones and rocks. And the lighter value that we mixed up can go over the tops. Okay, I'll just quickly wash that. And now, that's dry. Now we'll pick up the tinted version of that yellow, yellow ochre or yellow oxide. Yeah, if you ever want to purchase one of my paintings, you just simply message me on Facebook. Link's in the description below the video. And now we're going to pretty much separate all that yellow oxide with highlights and the actual yellow oxide is the darker value which is giving it some shadow and depth and whatever and whatever and stuff like that you know what I mean I mm, hope my hair wasn't in the way that's it and you can see what's starting to happen creating art Now I'm going to use glaze in this later on. If you don't know what glaze is, go to your art shop and get some. It's bloody brilliant stuff. It, you, you mix it with a bit of white and it puts a film over your water, I feel. I've been doing it a lot instead of getting a knife and trying to scrape on some fat, ugly cartoon lines on my water. How's that looking? That's not bad. That'll sink. We're going to sink that later. Don't you worry about nothing. All right. Now, get this tape off there. I'm going to go on for 40 minutes, okay. I'm just going to wash that brush. And I will use maybe the permanent linsman, which is there, and the blue, just so as I can mix up a distant mountain in the background, okay. So we've got our permanent linsman and this blue. We're going to make up some kind of um, purple there. I hope you can see that. And I will get some white in it now so you can see what it's doing. Yeah, there we go. Tint it with some white till it's the value you want. And that's pretty much the value I'm looking for. So I'm mixing and mixing and mixing. Now, I've, I like that colour, right? But watch this. Um, oh no, haven't got enough. I found this stuff. Uh, let me make sure I get the right one. Impasto medium. 
That's what it's called. I don't know if they have another name for it. Um, what do I do with this, which works for me? Um, <clears throat> down here on the pallet, I'm going to grab some. Yeah, that's about enough. So that's going to increase the volume of paint, okay, without changing the colour. So I'm going to get this brush because I need a fair bit of that and see what it's done. It's just increased the volume of that paint. Instead of me going through and using that and then go, oh, now I've got to mix up some more and carry on, that's just helping me get the amount that I need. Got me there. Now we're just going to map in our distant mountains here. Come there like that. And paint them in. Now, if that's why I take this up because if this had all that retarder under there, it'll be wanting to lift it up. I'm going to come across here. Oh. I've got to work out where to stop too, I think. I want it this colour. If you want yours blue, do it blue. Okay, now I'll wash that brush. Not enough yet. I'll wash that brush. I'm going to get some white. It's everything's still wet, so let's see how this works when it's wet. Because I want to put um, which part do I want to put? Yeah, I'll put maybe this bit over here. I'm lighting and tinting it with some white just around here, let it fade that way, and blend that back. There's going to be trees there covering, it's just this bit here, where the glow is in the middle, right there, because this one's even further back. Now I want to dry it and bring that in front of it to create that illusion of distance. Now I'll bring this one in front of that one. Okay. Because this is the centre of the paint and right here. I'll darken that up now. I mean that can have distant roughness on it, a silhouetting of trees or whatever may be there. But I've got to just Push that white down. There we go. Because there are trees in front of this, so that's fine. So I'll just quickly get rid of those dull areas there that are not quite working properly for me. There we go. Almost done with this distant mountain. There we go, done. See how that's gone behind it? I better bring that up a bit too. So here, I'll make sure you don't hit the water in. So this is coming up and bring it down on its own merit there, boom. Don't have it the same height there. I had it the same height and it looks stupid. I just saw it in the monitor. I'll put some of that on it at the end because it's a bit dull. I want to get on with the rest of the painting. Okay, I need to dry that. There we go, April Chung. Yeah, I showed everyone in the beginning. I'll show you again. I got it from Unsplash. There it is there. I'm changing it up a bit though. Now we've got some beautiful, bright... Where are we? Uh, where's the uh, forest green? There we go. Some beautiful, bright trees there. We get some lovely green straight in front of that and maybe I'll try if I've got some burn number there still yes I do um, 
I want to, did I dry? Yeah, that's okay. I just want to put this there so I don't get anything in the water. And it'll help me not being so pedantic. So I'm just going to get that there so I get nothing in the water. Okay, a bit of tape. It's good to have mask and tape with you. Now, what do I normally use for a... Um, uh, I'll try, where is that brush? I've got a flat angled. Um, I'm going to grab the forest green. First, I'll try it on its own, and if it's not working, I'll add some burnt umber with it, okay? So I've loaded that brush up. Hopefully it's chiselled and sharp. I'll start from this side and I can get some distant little trees out here. That's why I wanted the tape there, nice and distant. Look at that, nice and little. About to there. Just there. Now I want to grab a little bit of white and put with that just to separate those now in the distance. Same way, I've just grabbed some white in that brush, in that paint. And we're going to set these back with some atmosphere between us and them, hopefully. There we go, that'll do. And see how that tapes help me? Now I'll just wipe that dull paint off there, that light colour paint off there. And I'm going to pick up the green again now, just the full straight um, forest green. And I want to come up now. So we're coming up from about here. This is our tree. So these are going to be kind of distant pine trees like they've got in America. So I'll, what I'll try and do is I'll try and get the tops done. I want to wet the brush a bit because I want to get them nice and see how they're breaking up and hairy. I don't want that. I want them sharp and all the gaps, appropriate gaps in the middle where they need to be. And over here, I'll start coming up higher now. Keep loading your brush. Keep loading your brush, keep it sharp. Is that? Oh, it's a little bit dry, it's not too bad. Now we've got to come down, so they would be pretty much all the way up here. I'll, I'll quickly mark these ones in, the height where they're going to go, and from about here they're going to go all the way down to about there to the horizon line. So it's creating distance. So that's pretty much what's going to happen. Now I'm grabbing some of the burn umber and the green, burn umber and the forest green, just to get the really darkness behind there. Start from here. You want it nice and sharp. I need to wet that brush a bit more. It's a very browny dark green, which is good. It's going to distinguish it from there. Chisel it up as you reload it. Chisel the paint nice and sharp on your brush. Well, this brush ain't the best, but it'll do me. Concentrate on the top area. And then you can just come down and fill the bottom in. Like that. Okay. 
pretty simple. It's, it's up to you as well. After following, watching any tutorial artist, you can add your own detail. Okay. You don't have to do it all the same as theirs. All the way out of here. Come on. Let's get a nice tree here. Boom, 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 boom. If anything, they're coming around to us. When I move that tape, I can join them onto where they've got to go. Okay, that's dry. Now I'm going to clean that brush, get all that dark paint out of it, and I want to grab the green with, where are we? I'll use a bit of um, yellow, cadmium yellow. This got cadmium yellow medium there. Give that a go. I want to get some of the green and cadmium yellow medium just to get some of those trees to pop. Okay. Back here, let's get these nice and sharp. And we're just gonna, I don't want it the same value as that, and I've got a feeling it's going that same value. If anything, I want the tops brighter and the bottoms dark with depth. Just bits here and there. See what I'm doing? Because without that darkness in there, this won't work. These are quite basic Everglade trees, I think, but they'll do for now. How's that looking dark? Deep, yeah, deep, foresty and dark. That's okay, I've got it. I'm grabbing some more yellow for this side. Here we go, chisel it on your brush. Get these points nice and pointy. I'm going to try and come in front of that. Oh, you know what I didn't do on this side, but that's all right. That'll do. That'll work. This can be a bit darker mixed with yellow because it's got that darker mix under it. Coming down there. I want to leave the bottom where it's meeting the horizon line darker. Now this is going to just put others back and forward from each other. Something simple but effective, you know. Get more yellow down here. Get more yellow into this just for over here for that big one. And then I'm going to move the tape and start finishing it off. There we go. This is going to distinguish this side, the right hand side of the trees are getting lit up by most of that light. Now 
I need to move this tape. Let's hope I didn't peel the water off. Oh, golly. Oh, I did a bit. It was still a bit wet, but the glaze that I put on is going to stop that, is going to fix that. Now, what do we need there? We need some dark. I'm gonna, I'll try and use this same brush if I can. I better wash it pretty well. I'm gonna use that dark green and brown that I mixed up. And get the, um, I'm using a bullshit stick. Just so as I can get the bottom, where are we? Meeting against the water here. Okay. I don't want it too watery, otherwise it'll go translucent on you. It's alright, that's alright. Around here, we're going to get some more trees there anyway. <laughs> I'm going to pull that up, that dark line, just so it's not such a heavy line there at the bottom. Oh, I just got to turn this off, it's hot. Okay. Grabbing that colour, I'm going to grab that shore. Where are we? Over here, over here, over here. I'm going to grab that shore line, if I can, and start wrapping it around like so. Get some of that brown there. There we go. And I want to just wipe that brush and grab the green and bring that tree in front now. This one here, the main one. Get this one, where's the edge of my tape, there it is, so this tree is going to go from about there all the way. And I'll dry it so as I can get the stuff to work. Let's give that a quick wipe. Picking up the um, green and yellow mixed together and we want to bring this tree now this is way closer than those other ones so i don't know use whatever brush i don't know what i'm doing here this is right in front of us here he's right there right there he is i'll fix that up a bit that looks a bit stupulatingly stupid bottom of it's right there, he's come down there a bit, get him up there, yeah, you go all the way up there, get some of this going up from that brown we put there before, and then the yellow, the more the one mixed more on the yellow side, just grab that. And mainly just on this one here. And on some of these big ones down to there. That's it. Now I've got to dry that water just so as I can put the um, glaze on it. If it's not dry, it won't work properly, okay? That's not too bad. All right, 
that's it, we're finished. We just gotta add the water. So I've gotta find my glazing bottle, which is, no, it's gloss medium. There, I've just got some glaze, glazing liquid gloss. So what do I do with this? See the water, the water's sort of half done. Oh, this lid's all cracked. Where are you? There we go. So what do I do with this? I grabbed this, right? Enough that I'm gonna use. A flat brush is usually good for this. And I grab a little bit of white paint. And I find this, for a beginner, if you can grab yourself some glaze, it's gonna help you a lot. Because you know how some artists, they get the white paint on a knife and you put lines there? You can do that, but sometimes it can turn it cartoony. I just feel this is, um, I wanna use a different size flat. I just feel this, does it more subtle and a little bit more realistic looking because um, it, it turns into a film. So what I do, let's grab the appropriate brush, get a bit of white in there. You watch how much I use, not much at all. All right, it's, it's pretty much the amount you get from your partner when you separate. You don't get much back from it, all right? That's how much I've got on there, all right? And then that's enough to mix with all that glaze there. Because you can use the glaze just on its own, but I like to put a little bit of nothing you get from a separation into there, just to give it a bit more white, you know what I mean? All right, so we'll come over here, and we're going to want to sit all this down. So let's start kissing the water against those rocks. And get some on your brush. Where is the camera in the right spot? Yep. And why I use a, f a flat brush is because you can rest it on your stick and you can do beautiful, don't do too much. You've got to quickly, because this can dry quite quick. There we go. Now that is a bit too strong, so I will dilute that down with some more glaze. That's a bit too much white. Wow. And you want these nice, there, that's better. You want these nice and parallel with the horizon line. Horizontal with the horizon line, I mean. Sorry, not parallel. And these are just better than doing knife marks I feel. I'm going to use the other brush too. So I'll leave that one there and use just the other one as well. Uh, where is it? Here it is. And I'll get back a bit and just, so all these rocks here are gonna go underwater. Look at that, boom. Pick up some more come from the shoreline there, underwater, there, get it out, look at that. Get some more. Don't put too much white, practice this procedure. See, I've gone and stuffed it there, but such is life. And we're going to appropriately sink those stones under the water. What I could probably do is, I did get a bit of, um, I don't know if that's going to work or not, no. Okay, let's get some more. All the way out here where I've got the tape. So you could do a bit at a time. This, this needs practice as well, doing this stuff. But once you master it, it's fun, simple, and effective. Keep it very straight uh, with the horizon line. And you can't go wrong. Yeah. 
Yeah, see here, I've just gone and I've got to try and fix that. So I'm going to step back from the brush handle and try and see if I pull it too heavy. It's going to lift that retarded paint under there as well. So you got to, that's why you've got to practice these things. I know that can happen if I push too heavy. And now I'll just get some white and I'll kiss the edge of that against the rocks there, okay? And that's it. So I want just the smallest, this one will do. I've just got the titanium white and a little bit of... Um, not a little bit, I've got the paint on the script liner because I want to kind of get water against here somewhere, you know, just where it's sitting against the rocks on the edge. And we can probably blur it back. It's coming in a bit. That's it along here and it'll distinguish what's underwater and what's above water. You got me? I'm just pulling it with my f rubber glove as well just to give it some kind of distortion and natural look about it. I don't know. Maybe it's working, maybe it ain't, but I'll look and it normally Pans out okay. Does that look all right? Yeah, it's a bit more of a. You see what I mean? Now I want to get us some of that turquoise for the signature. I'm going to autograph this. So I'm getting a pale amount of turquoise and I'm really dampening up the paint just so as I can get it flowing off the brush. And then I'll put my signature on here and we'll whack a frame on it. So come down here and check out the links in the description below. There's about 10 or 12, I forget now. Become a member of my art group, share your art there and show everybody and become friends with everyone there. Uh, being a member in my art group, you get to know what's going on in my social media timetable, where I'm going live and stuff like that. All right. It's a subtle signature, but it's good. I'll whack a frame on this. There we go. That's not... There you go. That's not too shabby. We got the rocks under the water. I can move that over that way a bit. We've got the rocks under the water and the edge there. We've got a decent weird looking sky, a colourful piece of art. And just remember, you can do that, okay? And be sure to check out the links in the description below. There's quite a few there to knock yourself out with. Become a member, message me on Facebook if you ever want a month. And if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, good luck, and good on you.